So today we're talking about automation, what you should automate, maybe what you shouldn't. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I wanted to address an issue, some advice that's often overlooked, but I think is really, really important. And then there's also some other advice that seems to contradict with this advice. And well, I think we should talk about it. And the topic is automation. And I recently made a lesson for course zero, which is a course that I've been working on. And I thought I would just share this piece of the course with you all today. In case you're new to the channel, course zero is a new course that I released a little while ago. It's actually still a work in progress, but it focuses on strategy, specifically the strategy of how we learn to program program, how you go about using your time most effectively to become the best programmer that you can be. So be sure to check it out if you want more information. But for now, let's just jump into the lesson. So in this lesson, I want to talk about automation, which is some of the most important advice I can give you. And I just want to address it because this is something that's often overlooked. It's something that's often a challenge for people as they're getting started and overlooking it. You miss out on a lot of opportunities for learning and growth because one of the things you need more than anything as a brand new programmer is practice and experience. And in this lesson, I want to talk about how you can get more practice in your life and make your life as a programmer, your programming life better in the process. And that is through the use of automation. Now, of course, computers and computer programming are all about automation. We write programs so that we don't have to do tedious stuff. At least that's one of the reasons that we write them. But I find that new programmers often fail to see the opportunities that are all around them to automate the stuff in their life. And so my advice to every new programmer out there, anyone that's just getting started, that's trying to get experience and practice, is to automate everything. Automate everything all the time, anything that you can. And I know it's more complicated than that, so let's break it down and talk about some of the objections that I often get when I tell people they should be automating things. And also note that as you become more experienced, this advice is going to change over time. What it makes sense for you to automate now may not make sense later on, and vice versa. So we'll be sure to discuss that too. But first off, what do I mean when I say automate everything? What I mean is that anytime you're working on a computer, you're working on something for, maybe it has nothing to do with programming, you're updating a spreadsheet, whatever, you're, you're doing something that's tedious, boring, you're not really enjoying it, it feels very manual, think to yourself, could I automate this? Is there a way that I could make this faster, easier? Or if it's a task that takes a certain amount of time, is there a way that I can shift some of my time over to the computer? And so we're spending the computer's time to do the work. Now, one really obvious example of automation is a build system. And I'm going to talk about build systems in a future lesson. But build systems are basically a way that we automate the build, automate the process of building our software so that we don't have to type as much, we don't make as many errors, and we don't get as much carpal tunnel syndrome and other hand, wrist, and shoulder issues. And so yeah, while build systems like makefiles are really, really an obvious example, they're not the only one, and we shouldn't stop there. So here are some examples from my life. One is updating spreadsheets and moving around data. So I recently observed a student updating entries, basically copying data from one program into a spreadsheet that then they were using to do some analysis. And watching them, it looked so tedious. It actually was so tedious. They hated it and I recommended some automation. Number two for me is grading. So I teach a lot and I have a lot of work that I need to grade. My students do a lot of different projects and so I try to automate as much of my grading as I possibly can. And the upside is that my students get results more quickly, they get feedback more quickly, and I get to spend more time doing what I like, which is teaching them. I get to actually be a better teacher because I automate a lot of the grading, so I'm not spending my time doing that. A third thing for my life is taking role. So my university requires me to take role in my classes. And there's a bunch of reasons for this, but the point is, is when I first got started, I was just doing paper roles because I just, I'm like, that's the easiest thing to get started on. And it's so tedious. And so I took some time to actually build a web app that helps me automate that process. I also don't know if you realize this, but I also automate a lot of the editing of my videos. When I first started making YouTube content, I started noticing that there's a lot of repetition in what I do. There's a lot of things that I do over and over again. And so over time, I've built up a series of scripts, basically short programs that do some of these tasks, any of them that don't require an, the active use of my brain to make my job easier. And of course, this allows me to make more videos and post more content. And, and of course, I don't want you to think it all has to be work outside of my work. So I keep chickens. And one of the things that came up in my life is I'm getting tired of going out and closing up the chickens every night so they don't get eaten by coyotes and foxes and raccoons and everything likes chicken. So what's an embedded systems person to do? But I made a solar power chicken door for my 
coop that basically uses a sensor and a timer to determine when to lock them up at night. And so that's another example. Now, of course, your examples from your life are going to be different than mine. These are just things that I do, things that are important to me and things that I automate. But the point is, is that we all have opportunities if we're using computers, if we're even some of these things like chicken keeping is not thought of as a computer use activity, but there are opportunities all around us to automate things in our lives. And as a new programmer, I recommend that you look into those whenever you can. Now, at this point, when I give this advice, I get a lot of pushback. I expect a lot of pushback and I expect there's some concerns. So let's dig into it a little bit deeper and talk about some of the objections and why I think some of them may not hold up. So objection number one is I don't know how, and that's fair, especially when you're starting out. There's a lot you don't know. And some of these tasks may seem out of reach. Now, the more you learn, the easier it's going to get to automate stuff. But this is also a super valuable opportunity to learn something new. Now, remember that one of your goals in your training every day, you're training and your goal. One of those goals is to better understand how things work, how software works, how hardware works. And it seems like just about everything these days has some sort of API. That's an application program or interface for those of you that aren't familiar with that term. And that API is a way to connect other programs to that software, to that platform, to that website, whatever. And taking the time to learn how one of those APIs works is rarely a waste of time. It's usually super valuable, especially when you're getting started. So number two is it's going to take too long. Now this one is fair. If you've been in this field very long, we've all joked at one point or another about spending five hours to automate a two hour task. But these jokes do have a few problems with them. The first is we're assuming that that two hour task was a one time task and that it's never gonna happen again. In my experience, most of my tasks end up being recurring, even the ones that I think are just going to happen once. I think, yeah, I'm just going to do this once, but you know, next semester it comes up again and again and again. And I may spend five hours on it the first time, but I spend 15 seconds on it the second time. And it doesn't take me very long to start catching up. The second problem with those jokes is that the task is rarely the actual objective, especially as a new programmer. The point isn't to get this mind numbing task done more quickly, although that's a nice perk. The point is, is you're trying to gain skills. You're trying to learn things. You're trying to become a stronger programmer. And so it's not just about the speed up. It's also about what you get out of the experience. It's, it's the benefit that you gain. And this is why the advice changes over time. As you get more and more experience, the gain you get from certain tasks may be different than it is at the very beginning. But the beginning, just about any form of automation really helps you, really helps you develop your skills and become a better, stronger programmer. Now, the other thing, third thing, are we on three? I don't know. If you're like me, then programming is fun. You enjoy programming. I mean, yes, sometimes it's frustrating. You're working on a debugging a problem and you can't figure out all the details. You're not sure what's going on. That can be frustrating, but still programming, the challenge of it, the problem solving aspects of it, for me, that's fun. And personally, I would rather spend eight or nine hours writing an auto grader for my class than spending three hours in manual grading. And why? It's because those eight or nine hours they're fun, they're challenging, they're rewarding. Well, on the other hand, manual grading is mind numbing, boring, and sucks the soul right out of me. And the point is, if I'm going to be spending my time doing something that's going to take up my time, I might as well do something that I enjoy, that's rewarding, and that's gonna actually teach me something. And of course, in my life, I tend to teach classes multiple times. So again, my tasks tend to be repetitive. I tend to do things one semester and do them again in a future semester. So in the end, this still all pays off in terms of time. But what about urgency? Yes. I know sometimes you have a task and it has to be done in the next 20 to 30 minutes. It's very urgent. And that might not be the best task to automate. That may not be the best time for a really good learning experience. And I have to leave that decision up to you. It's your life and you have to decide what's so urgent that we can't take a slight detour to learn computer science. But I guess my advice is just don't let the urgency, don't let so many urgent things push out the important things. Because if you let that happen too often, you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities for really important things. And you're not going to learn and grow as much as you could otherwise. And as I mentioned before, as you get more experience, sometimes these decisions are going to change. Sometimes you may look at an automation task and say, I don't know that I'm going to learn much from that. And so later on, it may not be as beneficial to me as it was early on. The point is not to be dogmatic. The point is to just not pass up opportunities for progress and growth, because this is huge. Let me just show you a few of the things that I got into that I learned through automation, through personal life automation. The first is languages like Python, Ruby, Perl, JavaScript, PHP, all of these I was introduced used to because of something I was trying to automate. Embedded systems, which is now a huge part of what I do. Web frameworks 
like Rails, Django, React, all of these were some sort of automation, something I had to get done in my life, and I needed automation. Automation has given me experience with the APIs for YouTube, Discord, Google Sheets, Thinkific. I've had opportunities to play around with OpenCV, Zlib, FFmpeg, and a lot of other tools out there that are now part of my personal toolkit. Things that I can use professionally, things that I can use in my hobbies, whatever. And of course I could go on and on, and this is such a simple thing. You know, it's, it's simply just looking throughout my life at opportunities to automate tasks and automate things that otherwise would be tedious, maybe tasks that I don't want to do. But over the years, this simple activity has had a huge impact on who I am and what I do professionally. And I think it's a huge opportunity for you. Okay, so now let's get into a few more thoughts about this. The first. Hey folks, I hope this is helpful. Like the video if you enjoyed it. I hope this gives you some ideas about how you can improve your own programming training and your programming skills. Check out the course if you want the full lesson and other strategy related content. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. And until next week, I'll see you later.